Darling, you send me. Darling, you send me Hello. My name is Kelsey, and I am a vegan professional interior designer, and now officially, as of a couple weeks ago, New York City resident. Before I start ranting in my intro, I'm gonna give you a quick rundown on what's gonna be in this video. I'm gonna be talking about my apartment hunting journey from move out to now, tell you a little bit about how I got this place and about the apartment itself, the area I'm living in, etc., and probably a bunch of other random shit. For starters, Hi, how are, how are you doing? Uh, it's been a while. I am returning from a longer than expected hiatus from video making, finally. For lack of a better term, I had a lot of shit going on in my life. YouTube kind of needed to take a back seat to all of that. I got LASIK, which is awesome. I'm so blessed that humans now have the technology to shoot little laser beams into each other's eyeballs and restore our vision back to 2020. And my full-time professional nine to five job that actually pays my bills has been ramping up. Sometimes I'm working until the point of exhaustion after hours and on the weekends. And when you're doing interior design, for at least nine hours a day. The last thing you wanna do is sit in front of the camera and talk more about interior design. The side project I've been working on has really taken away a lot of the extra time that I normally would have to make videos. So I've been putting my free time into that instead. If you don't know what I'm talking about, it is the last video I just posted, Honesdale part one, which I've been saying I'm going to make a part two to this uh, because it was supposed to be a multi-part interior design series. And that is also something that I I still, ha I still haven't gotten to that either. And of course, by the title of this video, I moved! Moving out of your parents' house is so frustrating and stressful and time consuming and expensive that most people only do it once in their life. But I guess I just love it so damn much that I seem to do it every single year. Every time I think I've made a getaway from my family, they just, they just pull me back in. Mom, if you're watching this video, which you probably are because you've been telling all of your friends to watch my YouTube channel, I love you, but I need some space. And I wanna thank all of my subscribers who have been showing me love still while I've been gone in both the comments of my previous videos and on Instagram. Thank you for your patience with me. I really want to show you guys some love and like bring you more content. I'm really trying my hardest, but um, I want to bring you quality stuff and not just put out videos that like are kind of meaningless. Now for your regularly scheduled video content. This video was originally supposed to be a very standard apartment hunting video that everybody else on YouTube does, where I take you around New York City and show you around the different neighborhoods and I show you all the different apartments that I've seen and we look at the pros and we look at the cons and we look at the prices and we say, which one am I gonna get? at the end. But unfortunately, if we've learned anything from the past two years, my plans never go as expected. So this is how apartment hunting really went for me. Darling, you send me as I explained in my move out vlog, there were a lot of factors that determined my, my decision to move back home with my family out of my previous apartment. The main one being, obviously, you know, tiny, tiny global pandemic. After paying an exorbitant amount of money in rent for only actually living in that physical space for 10% of the time that I rented it, didn't really make a lot of sense. I was working from home, so I didn't need to go into the office at all. The city was rapidly shutting down literally every single bar, restaurant, store, you name it, on my block had closed permanently, like permanently. And when my roommate wasn't home, which she typically wasn't because she is a nurse and works nighttime, so our schedules never kind of lined up. So a lot of the time that I was in that apartment, I was completely alone in this like very quiet, very creepy city. In retrospect, I would say it was a good decision. Not for my mental sanity, but definitely for my bank account. I'm sure everyone received the typical pandemic enlightenment where you decided to pick up a new hobby or, or create a new business or I don't know, start glass blowing or something. But just a couple of days before I finally moved out of my old apartment, my father gave me a fantastic idea. Instead of looking for apartments to rent, I would just purchase one. Good idea, Kelsey, right? Because 
Buying a home is so, so simple these days, isn't it? That way 80% of people my age to live with their parents, yeah. But because the market was so fucking cheap at that time in New York City and the fact that that would be the investment of a lifetime, I mean, imagine buying an apartment at the height of the pandemic when everyone is fleeing the city, buying it for a great price, and then in, I don't know, five years, you just triple your money? Yeah, it sounds nice, doesn't it? Sounds nice. And of course, at this time, apparently money meant physically nothing to me. So why not spend all of your life savings on a shoebox studio apartment in the middle of Times Square? So I began my search for this new dream apartment of mine that I was going to buy. I was scouring Zillow and Street Easy and I was looking at roughly like three to five apartments every single week. I probably saw a total of like 10 to 12 different apartment buildings in a couple of different areas around the city. I somehow got stuck with this real estate agent that was a fucking nut job. And I don't even know how it happened because I had just like clicked the little button that was like, request a tour of this property. And I got a call from a very angry Jewish woman like three seconds later. She like talked at me for five minutes and then I hung up the phone and, and turned to my mom and was like, I think I have a real estate agent now, but I, I'm not really sure what, what, what happened. I feel a little um, assaulted. I should have protested, but my mom said, no, keep her because it's great to have an angry Jewish woman on your side because she is gonna get you the best deals. And I blame my mother for what happened next. <laughs> But although in theory that sounds great, she would call me every 10 minutes, every single day, and not leave me the hell alone, and talk to me about the real estate industry and architecture like I'm a fucking idiot and I don't work in corporate interior design. And she also started a very, very aggressive fight with another resident in a building I was actually interested in. Seriously, she insulted this guy so bad that he followed us into the lobby and they, they've gotten a verbal brawl in front of the doorman. It was, I was beside myself. It was, it was truly an experience of a lifetime. So after all of that, and also realizing that a strict budget of $300,000 kind of gets you a deadly squat in New York City, I decided to close up shop and give up my dreams on being a New York City real estate tycoon. At this point, I was over apartment hunting. I was over living at home. I was over just, just pandemic life in general. Wasn't living anywhere permanently. I was kind of a nomad going back and forth between my parents' house. And sometimes I would come into the city and, and sometimes I would be at a friend's house. I, I just, I, I was going absolutely insane. I gave up entirely on the apartment hunting search. And I also didn't know if I wanted to live alone or if I wanted to live with a roommate. I mean, at this point I had had six 16 roommates over the course of six years. That is not a lie. That is an actual number. I've lived with 16 different people since 2013. I mean, either I'm really, really good at making friends or I am the crazy common denominator in all of these situations, but I guess that really depends on your perspective. I had a couple of people in mind that I could potentially live with, but I just, just trying to live with a new person and learn this new person and then not even knowing if I wanted to live with someone for up to a year or because, you know, probably in a year I would want to eventually live by myself or, I mean, hopefully at that point living with a boyfriend. <laughs> I'm 26 years old, like I, I, sh I should probably be hoping that, that in a year or two I will be living with someone who I, is actually a, a partner. <laughs> a pipe dream of mine has been to always live with my cousin, Tommy, who has been my best friend since childhood. We are family, we are ex also extremely close. We are very similar, ESTJ. And now, without further ado, my roommate, Thomas. Okay. I need to know. <laughs> <laughs> Much better. Or this is a low budget video. Super mod. <laughs> <laughs> so, so basically we'll just talk about um, how we oh. shut up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This is my roommate Tommy. Tommy, introduce yourself. Enough said. So Tommy, tell us, how did you find this particular apartment? Red Hop, Street Easy. One of those two, I'm not really sure. Either way, the realtors scammed us. 
<laughs> Basically, Tommy found almost the exact same unit in the same building. We set all of our money up, we put in the application fee, we're about to sign the lease, and literally our realtor just ghosted us for two straight days. And then a week and a half later, he emailed us saying, do you want to live in this other apartment? It's almost the exact same one in the same building. And we said yes. Um, within a couple of hours, we had signed release, sight unseen. And um, I was just, I was just praying to the Lord that it, we didn't do something actually terribly wrong. I didn't really care. I figured it was fine. Confidence. <laughs> Confidence. <laughs> Better work, work a girl, girl, give it a, a twirl. twirl. Tommy, what are you most excited about living together? Together with me. or in the city? Because those are two different things. With me. Um, spontaneity, high 12 out of 10 energy, <laughs> great organization, and. That's my top skill. I love having someone who can take my Instagram photos at the drop of a hat. Yeah, it's good to have a model on hand. Yeah, stop it. <laughs> you have a good Spotify playlist? You mean, like, Why, like the disco video? music? Yeah. yeah, it's always bumping. Tommy, what are you most excited about living in the city? For me, I'd have to say the most exciting part would be living in a gay community. Not something I've ever done before. It's very different, welcoming, and bizarre. If you're gonna come to the city, definitely come to Hell's Kitchen. Because if you're not living in a gay disco, are you really living? Now, about the apartment itself. Hell's Kitchen is an area in Manhattan that is known as being the neighborhood between 34th Street and 59th Street, and then between 8th Avenue and the Hudson River. It's known for having a plethora of bars and restaurants and nightclubs, and it's most famous for being in the center of gay nightlife. Most of the bars and nightclubs in this area, and especially on 9th Avenue, are openly gay bars. I mean, I moved in officially on the day of the Pride Parade, and 9th Avenue was a rainbow if I've ever seen one. I've always felt very safe in this neighborhood as well, not just because it's literally always popping off from morning to evening. There are people on the street, bars are open, like people are living their lives, and I just always feel more safe when there's people around me. You know, safety in a crowd of strangers, but also because I don't have to worry about guys hitting on me and harassing me and catcalling me on the street because I'm just simply not their type. The proximity of work to this apartment is also fantastic. I'm roughly 20 minutes away from my office. Even though I don't go in there now, I will have to go in probably sometime in the near future. The building is an 11 story elevator building. Yes, that's right, I said it. I have an elevator in my building, and you would think that that would be a very basic necessity for a very large apartment complex, but in New York City, it is simply not. Here, it is a luxury only the top 1% can afford. Uh, the top 1% and two very broke people living in a one bedroom and calling it a two bedroom. Another luxury? Laundry. No, 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 not in my actual unit. Who do you think I'm the queen of Sheba? No, it's in a very creepy corner of the basement downstairs, but it's in the building nonetheless, which is a luxury that most people in New York City cannot say that they have. We have a part-time doorman, which is a luxury I've been waiting a long time to have. This will ensure that any packages I have delivered will stay in the mailroom until I decide to pick them up, instead of the mailman leaving my packages on the front stoop and then wondering where my package is because it's a week late and I'm searching for a box of clothes and shoes that my father shipped me from home. But then you look in the trash can and you see an empty open box addressed to me from my father and nothing else but a pair of shoes. So you assume that the homeless woman who lives on your block took your package, opened it up, took the clothes out, and decided that the shoes were too ugly and dirty and out of style for even her taste that she decided to simply throw them away because they were useless to her, and to me now, apparently, and she threw them out in my trash can. We live in a two-bedroom flex with one bathroom and a full kitchen and living room area. What a flex bedroom means is that it's typically a standard one-bedroom apartment with a really big living room space, but instead they put a wall up in the middle of the living room to create an extra bedroom. We got really lucky because the building actually built a physical wall for us. We didn't have to pay for it at all. It is actually a wall with 
paint and molding and a door. And it's, I mean, sometimes a flex wall is literally just a piece of cardboard that they put in the middle of a room and then they call it a two bedroom. I mean, you really never know what you're gonna get here. Tommy is living in the flex bedroom and I'm living in the true bedroom with the closet because I am a lady dammit and I own a lot of clothes that I never wear. You're probably thinking, Kelsey, why are you guys renting a flex two bedroom instead of getting a true two bedroom? And my answer to you is, do you think I'm the kin of Bill fucking Gates? I don't have a million dollars to spend yet. I have about $1,600 a month to spend on rent, and this is what that gets you in New York City. Uh, Manhattan to be specific, because I, I, mean, I think I want to live in Brooklyn. I will literally never move to Brooklyn. We pay $3,100 a month in total, which means I pay $1,550 each month just for rent. Then you factor in Wi-Fi, which is about $25 each a month, and then you factor in utilities such as electric and that could be between 50 and 100 depending on the season and how much air conditioning you need which is like always way more air conditioning than you expect to use so altogether i pay roughly 1650 to live here <laughs> all things aside my favorite part about this place is the kitchen i cannot tell you how many apartments i looked at that have mini fridges and hot plates and no counter space or it's literally like a little table from Ikea and they call that like the cupboard. No, 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 no. It is very common in New York City to not have a real kitchen. So we got super lucky, like, like, like very lucky. We have a full refrigerator, a real stove, a dishwasher, a real sink with a little knob that comes out so you can like, what's that called? That Like a, a, with a detachable faucet that you can like take out and like put water in other places that aren't in the sink, which, which you think is like not necessary, but it's totally necessary. And lots and lots and lots of counter space and storage. Mm. The apartment faces south, which is very fantastic for my cute little plant family, and they are definitely enjoying their stay thus far. Another great asset, we face the interior of the buildings instead of the street, so we don't get any of that street noise. Unlike last year at my old apartment, and I lived directly on First Avenue, so I was both woken up and put to sleep by the sounds of yelling drunk people, screaming crackheads, and the sound of morning cars honking at, at nothing. They're just always honking even if there's no reason to honk. It's very quiet here, comparatively. Actually, no, in general, it's very quiet all the time. Not even comparatively, it's very quiet here. The catch with an interior apartment is that typically you either get zero sunlight because there's buildings blocking you, or the person directly across from you gets a full breakdown of your morning routine and truly how often you like to walk around naked. Bitch, we got both! We live behind two parking garages. Not one, but two parking garages. So as far as the eye can see, like at least a block away, there's no buildings. And we have amazing views to Hudson Yards. And like I mentioned, it faces south, so it's sunny all day long. And that's all that I've got to share with you today. I apologize for not showing too much footage of the apartment, but that's because I want to eventually do an actual like real apartment tour, but we need to kind of get settled in a little bit more. We're waiting on some furniture to come in and obviously need to decorate. So once that's all set up, I'm gonna be filming a totally killer apartment tour. Let's just, let's just hope it doesn't take another three months. My avocado tree and I, of course, want to thank you for watching and for all of your patience with us. Although posting consistently on YouTube is great for growth, it's not so much great for my mental health. And because I have so many other things to do, I decided that I would much rather put my time and my effort and my love and my creativity at, like so strongly into one video per month maybe than create four very subpar videos that both are not fulfilling for me and not so much fun for you to watch. I'm just in general trying to relieve a lot of extra stressors in my life to focus on my mental health and just like really getting my shit together. And although YouTube is the thing that I most enjoy doing or just making videos in general and being creative in general, it is very low on my priority list, which is unfortunate because if it were up to me, then making videos would be number one on my priority list. 
But YouTube doesn't pay the bills, so from now on until further notice, uh, posting videos is going to be very spontaneous and sporadic, so if you want to be notified the next time I post a video, you're going to have to click the bell so that you can actually get a notification for when I post and subscribe. If you like this video, please like it, leave me a comment, share it with your friends. That does help me grow my channel so that maybe one day I can make this first on my priority list. So with that, I will see you in my next video. Bye.